Whether you know John Madden as a coach. Well, let's start off and stay after the whole game. Let's hey! A commentator. You know the great thing about being a football player is you don't have to take a shower to go to work. Or a video game pioneer. John Madden is beloved by so many. He entertained us with his personality. See, now here's the camera. Now look, right in the middle there is, is someone that just says, I want to watch your game here. And they just hang in there like, like they're like an old bologna sandwich or something. You know, you let it sit around there, sit around there, you get hungry enough, and pretty soon you eat it. He led a group of outcasts to football's highest pinnacle and he paved the way for the game of football to be adored by generations to come. He's a father, a teacher, a Hall of Famer. He's forever immortalized in the game of football and in American culture. This is the incredible life of John Madden. Over to the left, it's a toss play, Jacobs gonna run behind him, got daylight. End zone, touchdown, Jacobs breaks through. This Raiders group right now, they are playing out of their minds good. Everybody just got to be locked in um, on their job and, and, and stay focused. Raiders! Just win, baby. <laughs>John Earl Madden was born in Austin, Minnesota on April 10, 1936. His father, Earl, was an auto mechanic. And in 1943, when John was just seven years old, Earl and John's mother, Mary, decided to move to Daly City, California, located south of San Francisco. He attended middle school at Our Lady of Perpetual Help, a Catholic school where he met his lifelong friend John Robinson who would also become an NFL coach. It was at this time that the two grew to love the game of football. The pair would go their separate ways when attending high school. John went on to become a star player at Jefferson High School. At 6 foot 4 inches tall, he was a dominant offensive lineman, and the ultimate team player. After high school graduation, still longing to play the game he became enamored with, John attended College of San Mateo, where he finally earned a football scholarship to University of Oregon, reuniting with childhood friend John Robinson. While playing for the Ducks, and studying pre-law, he believed this would be his opportunity to succeed in football. Unfortunately, John had a knee injury that required surgery, leading to him leaving Oregon. He attended Grays Harbor College in 1956, then transferred to Cal Poly, where John was a standout on both sides of the ball, becoming an all-conference player at offensive tackle. He earned a Bachelor's of Science in Education in 1959 and a Master's in Education in 1961. In this time he would also become the catcher for Cal Poly's baseball team. Madden was back on track towards achieving his dreams of becoming a professional athlete. Despite his injury, Madden was thriving on the field, and he was drafted into the NFL in 1958 by the Philadelphia Eagles. John Madden had finally made it, but his playing career would once again be short-lived. It was his first training camp where the future Hall of Famer would suffer another injury, this time ending his playing career forever. But his legendary teammate would pave the way for his next chapter. It was Hall of Fame quarterback Norm Van Brocklin that took Madden under his wing. That was when he knew that coaching would be his calling. He didn't know it at the time, but the next few weeks that he would spend with Van Brocklin would change football history forever. After being released by the Eagles, John Madden had his first stint as a football coach, returning to California to join the coaching staff at Hancock Junior College from 1960 to 1963. John found his calling. In 1962 he was promoted to head coach. 
and in 1964, he received an offer to be the defensive coordinator at San Diego State University under future Chargers head coach Don Coryell. It was here that he was recognized by another NFL franchise. One not too far from where he grew up in Northern California. The Oakland Raiders. Madden proved to be the right man for the job. He took over a team of misfits, and led an attack on the NFL that had never been seen before. The Raiders dominated the 70s, with their new coach John Madden being the youngest head coach that the league ever seen. The Raiders' defense intimidated opponents, as Madden compiled the best winning percentage in franchise history, a milestone that still stands today. As the team grew fond of Madden, the Raiders kept winning, and eventually etched Madden's name in NFL lore forever. Going to the Super Bowl during the 1976 season. It was Madden's opportunity to show that he was now the best coach in all of football. It would be the Minnesota Vikings and their famous defense named the Purple People Eaters, that would stand in the way of John Madden and the Raiders. The Raiders' offensive line dominated under Madden. Raiders tackle, Art Shell, held star defensive lineman Jim Marshall to zero tackles in the most important game of both men's careers. John Madden had finally brought the Raiders to a Super Bowl victory, and their dominance was on full display for the world to see. With this victory, there was nothing else for Madden to prove. He chose to close this chapter of his career, forever. I've been here for 12 years with the Oakland Raiders and 10 years as a head coach. And those 10 years have been the happiest years of my life. I gave it everything I had. I don't have any more. I'm not resigning, I'm not quitting, I'm not doing anything. I'm retiring from football coaching, and I'm never going to coach again. He kept his word. Now it was time for Madden to find his new calling, in something that didn't come as natural to him. Frank Labor along with ex-Oakland Raiders coach John Madden. And looking ahead to the second half now, what do you think? Well, I really think what, what we thought before the game, that it's still going to be secondary and coverage. I really didn't respect broadcasting then. I mean, I wasn't a big fan of broadcasting. CBS offered me a job, I don't know, four or five games, and I said no. My agent at that time, he said, if you don't do it, they may not want you. I had to try it, so I tried it, and, uh, and I really liked it. I mean, I really, I really did like it. He would soon adapt to his new role, and eventually became the most well-known sports broadcaster in America. Boom, we cross him, the left goes to the right, the right goes to the left, this guy crosses here, he crosses here. They have no idea where we are, who we are, where we're coming from, or who we're throwing to. Very interesting. That Troy Aikman's trying to grow a beard, and he just can't do it. I mean, you know, the blonde-haired guys, a lot of them have trouble, but I can't even, I'm looking as close as I can, and. I can't see any beard, but he's been, that's a four-day beard, isn't well, it? It's a passive attempt. No, it's very, very passive. <laughs> there it is. You know, here it is, but see, I mean, I mean, he got a little in here, 
and a little up there here but he doesn't have anything here at all watch when you take it off he doesn't have anything going up in there Belichick is the defensive coordinator of the Giants and one thing you learn as a defensive coach you learn to draw upside down there's we see the the buckets now there's a third bucket this week I think what happened there's always been yeah there's always been like a mother and father like this is a father bucket this is a mother bucket and since the last game they had a baby bucket so this is a baby bucket so they got three now there always been two one's going to go to Parcells one's going to go to another assistant and one will go to a player later in the game see see, see, see how heat does come out of the top of your head look at it just coming off of Nate's head there that's where it escapes if you have heat in your body and you want to let it out you take your hat off yeah you know, what you could do is, is you could have a barbecue on that head. Nate's got a lot of room to let it out. Yeah. I mean, you could cook like some burgers on there. Joe Montana looks more like Barry Manilow, doesn't he? <laughs> Whatever he looks like, he's a marvelous athlete. He makes a little basketball twist there and pivot, and boom, the ball's there. Those booms stuff <laughs> have been with me all my life. Boom! That is a great stiff arm. Madden became so popular as a broadcaster that he earned 16 Emmys throughout his career. And commercials would come next. And you scramble around like a crazy guy trying to make the big meeting. You can blow your whole career. So I've probably in my lifetime broken through more paper than anyone in the world. The world record for that. I gotta say, my beer tastes great. Madden became the NFL's link to mainstream America. Well, John, what did you think of tonight's episode? I loved it. The last minute addition of Wally Kogan to the lineup was a bit of a gamble. He was a household name by the late 80s, but in 1988, the Madden video game franchise will make him synonymous with football forever. Again, that was luck. You know, I mean, there was no way we sat down or I sat down and said, I'm going to make a video. I didn't even know what a video game was. The game was a hit, making millions of dollars every year and continues to do so till this day. As an analyst, John Madden's final broadcast was during the Steelers' Super Bowl victory in 2009. Just three months later, John would retire. The success that John had, along with his contribution to football didn't go unnoticed. More than 25 years after retiring, John Madden was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Today feels like the second time in my life that I'm being carried off the shoulders of others. Yet instead of off the field, it's into the Hall of Fame. On December 28, 2021, the world would mourn as the legendary Hall of Fame coach and broadcaster died at the age of 85, leaving behind a wife, two kids, five grandchildren, and fans all over the world. John Madden's passion for football led him to have one of the best careers the sport has ever seen. Reaching far more fans than the game has ever reached before, John Madden will be missed by fans everywhere, and his mark on football will be felt everywhere, forever.